would you be willing to start to demonstrate that it's autonomous? Would you be willing to flip this up and start the bot at the start of the match? Deep Melt is a fully autonomous robot. Now, the Kazmers have asked me to demonstrate that this bot is fully autonomous. Wow. So he's handing me the controller for his bot. Apparently, all I have to do is flip this switch and the bot starts and just goes, and I don't have to do anything. So let's get this fight going. Three, two, one. Fight, robots fight. Oh, wow, nice. So T-Belt is one of the uh, Melty Oh, wow, Greens. what a yes. shot. <laughs> Brought to you today by the Kazmer clan. T-Belt is fully autonomous, as you can see. I'm not doing anything. It's a critical design right now, especially yeah. with an autonomous robot in the center. You not only got a... Ooh, wow, what a shot. And hey. Marchese and Black Glass Wave not are not out. moving. That is a uh, no. knockout. Oh, wow. That's crazy! That's awesome. uh, that is, by the way, guys, the first combat robotics fight I have ever driven. <laughs> and, and a win, right? After and the I win! Wow. So now, with this AI stuff, you said that you guys are really rudimentary right now. Yeah, it's a, I, we call it a drunken three year old. Yeah. <laughs> Tentatively, go forward and try to hit, tentatively back up. <laughs> and we can kind of play with some of the timings of how long you do that. But it's, that's the state of it right now. We're not doing wall detection. We're not doing Brett or Bert detection. Yeah. We're not doing yet. The eyesight on here is these very simple, two IR LEDs, really bright, that act as flashlights out there, and an IR receiver that looks for the reflection of that IR and the intensity of the reflection reflects how close whatever you're looking at is. Since we spin, it's like a radar. Right, I can you're getting a full picture. I'm sampling really fast, and I'm, I can easily pick up, this is what my environment looks like, and I can get a picture. Now, this bot isn't doing that. It didn't have time Not to get yet, that. Not yet, yeah. But it has the ability to actually take advantage of that. And that granted, it's fuzzy. The nice thing about IR is it tends to, some materials reflect IR more than others, but it's not like double or triple. It's like 10, 20% brighter. So generally, it doesn't throw the whole system off. Another nice thing, if an opponent like brings an IR flashlight in their bot and shines it at us, that you gave us a beacon to you. Right. We're just gonna see you. <laughs> and go right at it. It's interesting. It's, um, you're only limited by your creativity. Yeah. You know, and uh, so there's lots of opportunities to really build that. Future versions of liftoff will have software that assists the driver. So imagine having, you're coming at liftoff, liftoff sees you coming, and Andrew hits a button, and it basically says, go here. And it, do a <laughs> it right hook, do a left hook. Moves around and, the other side. And he side. doesn't even do it, because he can't move the joysticks fast enough to do it. Right, okay, so two things that are kind of blowing my mind. First of all, you're telling me that currently, your translation is so fast. If you hold the stick in a direction, it will slam into the other wall before you can stop. Human it. reaction time just isn't good enough right now. Once it starts building, it just accelerates. It's like, right. it starts slow, you kind of see the nudging, but it, it's a fine line. At some point, it just takes off. It like, it gets into that resonance cycle and it just... It'll fly. Well, it hits the other wall before you can stop it. And on this bot, you can kind of play with it. You can actually see it without ripping itself apart. Right. You kind of learn, oh, this is how I have to drive that thing. Gentle nudges, Gentle little, little nudges. movement. Brazil, right? Yeah. Welcome. Thank you. When did you come? I came yesterday. Seven. Good. Nine hours. Oh. The shirts are awesome. Oh, wow, thanks. Thanks a lot. This is Take a look. Yeah. Very nice. I think you already know Team Beast and Wasabi. Yeah. yeah. They already qualified just yeah. you know. <laughs> so that's Andrew Three, Kazmer, two, and that one, is fight, Tomas, robots and that means this is Sombra versus Flippin' Cut. Flippin' Cut is a melty brain spinner. That means the robot is the weapon. Yeah. Go get him, go get him. Be aggressive, man. Chase him. Oh! Display there. No! Flippin' Cut is stuck up on the corner. Wow, the weapon is up to full speed now on Flippin' Cut. Woo! That weapon 
Ryan's down. The countout is happening. Can Tomas get out of the corner? Yes! Yes! And that will go the full three minutes. This one will go to the judges. Those are some happy Kazmers over there. I love it. So your winner is Flip and Cut, the new meta, the Melty Brain Spinner. <laughs> For our fans who are like, you know, not necessarily as initiated on weapon types, yep. this bot doesn't have an active weapon technically, right? It doesn't have anything on the bot that goes spin spin. So explain to our fans like what a melty brain spinner is, how it is supposed to work. So there's the two big types of bots, vertical spinners and horizontals. So technically, this is a horizontal spinner. Now within horizontal spinners, you have the weapon that you spin, direct drive, belt. This is considered a whole body spinner. Some people will even call it a shell spinner, but a shell spinner has motors and wheels that drive the bot around the arena and the outside of the shell spins and the weapon is attached to that. Right. And the benefit of doing that is you get more mass in the, you're creating inertia, you know, momentum in this weapon and energy storing up as you get it spun up. And by putting more of that mass on the outside, you get more energy on the impact. Right. So the thing about a melty brain though, it's the whole bot is spinning. And that means the entire three pounds is the weapon. And that's what generates those big hits in the arena. The challenge with making a melty brain, it's easy to take two motors and just say, hey, you spin this way, you spin that way, and we're gonna go fast. We're gonna go fast but you're not gonna move. Yeah. In order to move, you basically need to, as you're spinning, if I'm going, that way, I need to pulse this motor faster, and I need to pulse this one a little slower. So I'm still spinning so the it'll, bot. It'll turn a and little it will, bit. And it gets a little nudge that way. And then when I flip right here, I start spinning this one slower and this one faster. And that's the drift that we talk about. Right. A bot like Liftoff spins at 2,000 RPM. So that's like 60 times a second. Right. It works out to be like 20 milliseconds for each half spin that you're pulsing the motors for 20 milliseconds. And you have to pulse it at just the right time because if you're off, then it's gonna just kind of wobble. It won't really drift. You have these LEDs here and the LEDs are for the driver. They're not for the bot. So you know a good melty brain when their LEDs are lock solid in place. Right, they're it spinning. looks like the bot's standing yeah. still if you just- The LEDs, the LEDs are just, it's like there's a green LED here on liftoff and a red LED here. And it, they're just sitting there. They have their, whatever they're using, gyros, accelerometers, they have that locked in. Those things are not drifting. And as they start pulsing the motors, for those LEDs to stay in the same spot is also, a feat. Normally they drift because you're changing the dynamics, starting to accelerate and pulse the bot, creates accelerations the accelerometers pick up. And so it's a complex system in one way. It took us four plus years to get to this point. Right. You like that? You doing good? Yeah, it's translating so well. This is crazy. It's so controlled. So the hub motors last September was our, you know, was a major step forward. We also switched to these titanium wheels. Titanium so spokes, basically, or spikes wheels. Spikes, and this is uh, the sharp ones we have. We wore those down. Yeah, today. this is amazing. Yeah, you gave one of these to my daughter earlier today. Yes. She loves it, by the way. Yeah. So these are normally super spiky. Look at the difference there. Absolutely vicious. Yeah. I absolutely love that. So these are titanium. These are titanium. And we you wore these down on wood. On wood. <laughs> we used to have like an eighth inch thick and now we're the next thing off from sun cut send down from underneath eighth inch. And there's people here that are running even thinner wheels. And in our application, I don't think we can go any thinner. No, you get way, way too much flex on it. Too much force. And so that was a major step forward. It's been a, a long journey. That was the game changer as far as like reliability for you guys, I feel yeah, like, we would when you switched to hubs. The, we would wear the rubber wheels down to the point where we were high centered. The bot was completely on the floor. We yeah. rubbed away all in three minutes. When we lose the match because at two and a half minutes, no more wheels. Right. So I'm impressed with how uh, The Greatest Danger, they're doing uh, 3D printed TPU wheels and they're getting enough life out of them to make it multiple matches. So that's an interesting thing that, you know, we might pursue at some point, some, you know, we will be fighting on metal Yes, you will. And, uh, and this won't work. And this probably won't work. <laughs>